So I've got here, live in the flesh, the one, the only, the inimitable, Richard Dawkins. Richard, thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming to what we think of here as the center of the universe. I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you've come to agree then. <laughs> Uh, this, I think it's the first time Richard's visited me in my office, and so thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, just talk about the, the human mind's capacity to know, and to think, and to believe. You know, I look at how much trouble people have with mathematics, typically. If there's any one subject that the most number of people say, I was never good at, insert a topic, it's going to be math. And so I say to myself, if our brain were wired for logical thinking, then math would be everyone's easiest subject, and everything else would be harder. So I, I'm kind of forced to conclude that our brain is not wired for logic. That's a very good point, and it's more than just that. I think there's also a kind of unwarranted pride in being bad at mathematics. Uh -huh. uh, you will never hear anybody saying how proud they are of being ignorant of Shakespeare right. uh, or Dryden. Um, but People, plenty of people will say they're, they're proud of being ignorant of, of uh, mathematics. Or if they don't use the word proud, they'll say, I was never good at math, ha 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 ha, yeah, they'll that, chuckle about that, it, that, and it becomes right. a joke. Um, there was a thing in, in one of the British newspapers where a, there was a science writer, I think a science journalist, was lamenting the fact that many people in Britain uh, think it takes one month for the Earth to orbit the Sun. And the editor then inserted there, doesn't it, Ed? <laughs> Uh, so he was, as it were, say, saying, you know, I'm the editor of a national newspaper. And of course, I don't really think it takes, but nevertheless, I, it's okay to make a joke about being ignorant of this very elementary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. point of astronomy, which he would never, ever do about being, you know, con confusing, confusing Byron with Virgil or, or, or something like that. Right, and, and, or ever be proud of such a thing. So, so, so then you must admit or confess that we as a human organism must have a great challenge before us to think rationally, logically, scientifically. Yeah, I mean, you made the very interesting point that maybe we're not wired to be good at logic. Well, you generalized from mathematics to logic. Yeah, I did, but, but, um, but for this conversation, I yeah, think we can um, claim that. Certainly, many many people are extremely illogical, but um, and they. By the way, they, they get along just fine in life. They live long, long lives, yeah. and. Uh, but I think it's an interesting point that our that our wild ancestors needing to survive in the in the presence of lions and drought and famine and things. You'd think logic would be pretty important for survival. <laughs> <laughs> so. If, I, if not mathematics, at least. Well, least. well it could be. Maybe early people who said, oh, there's a creature there with big teeth. Let me investigate it further. Yes, that's right. yes. I mean, in a way, that's right. The, it's being some level, scientific is, is a bad thing. Uh, uh, curiosity yeah. doesn't always work. Um, my, uh, I, I had a cousin as a, who was a, a little boy, uh, put his finger in the, the, in the mains and got a shock. So he did it again just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real scientist. <laughs> But not very good for survival. Right, right. So perhaps the 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 gut reaction uh, to run or to be scared or to to chant or uh, I mean I, I guess what I'm getting at is there's so much of human civilization that derives not from logical thinking but from what we might sim simply call illogical thinking. Illogical thinking and I mean art. You know I've got. Van Gogh on the wall, no one's going to quiz him and say, how logical were you when you painted The Starry Night? And so, what does it mean to object, then, to people who feel this way? Because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more, I detach myself more from that battle than you do. You're, you are on the front lines, and I'm way in the back line watching you do this. And, and I'm saying, sometimes people just want to feel rather than think. Yes, but I'm, I keep pushing back to the evolutionary origins of this, and, and when you have to survive in a, in a hostile environment, it may be that you do need a certain amount of illogical... Uh, Gut. F yes, it may be that you need to fear things which logic tells you 
Well, maybe it's a matter of the, of the odds that, that, that something is actually dangerous. Um, or the cost to you, the, if it the is. The cost to you. If, if, if you see, if you see a sort of rustling in the trees, um, it, it could be a, a leopard about to jump on you. But it's much more likely to be the wind, and, and the, the, the logical, rational explanation is probably it's the wind. But when your survival depends upon the, the remote possibility, one well, might not remote, the, the rather lower pr probability that it might be a leopard, the prudent thing is to be uh, more risk averse than, than a than a Did the statistics justify? Or, yes, exactly, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so now we have a world where we're kind of, we're prisoners of this sort of genetic molding that has occurred. And now, but, so, so I guess my, my point is I don't object, object as much to that as you do. Yes, okay. And, and it, it like, it, it, what's the phrase? It tickles your claw, or craw, gets yeah, in your know, craw, whatever what that phrase is. Yes, yeah. yeah, and so well, get on this let, let, let me, let this me campaign. Try, let me try to get in your craw, whatever this okay. is. Um, <laughs> Go on, bring it, uh, bring, bring uh, it on. The, 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 a, a former professor of astronomy at Oxford told me a story of an American astrophysicist who... Now, I am one of these folks, so I, I would know these names if you mentioned I, them, I, unless I, they are yeah, suppressed. I, I, yeah, for, for, um, he, he didn't tell me the name. Okay. okay. Um, and this man writes learned articles in astronomical learned journals, mathematical papers, and the mathematics is premised on the belief that the world is, uh, well, that, 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 that the universe is between 13 and 14 billion years old. Mm -hmm. And this man writes his papers, he does his mathematics and everything. He privately believes the world is only 6,000 years old. Well, uh, you m may be tolerant of that because you may say, well, as long as he gets his sums right, as long as he, his p paper is well- The research paper, yeah. Mm -hmm. fine. I would say that man should be fired. Um, <laughs> He should not be a professor of astrophysics in, in an American university. And we might differ about that, because you might say, uh, his private beliefs are private, they're nothing to do with me. If he does his astronomy right, um, then that, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you that that's how I would react. Yeah. Yeah, what he does at home on Sunday, that's his only. But if, if, if it doesn't enter the science classroom, then I don't care how he thinks or okay, what he believes. Okay, let me take an even more extreme example, okay. which is fictitious in this, in this case. Uh -huh. uh, in, imagine that you were going to consult a doctor, uh, and I, I'm, I'm making him an eye doctor, because they're sort of, you know, about the waist, but you happen to know that he privately doesn't believe in the sex theory of reproduction. He believes that babies come from storks. Okay. Um, no, guessing, I wouldn't go to that doctor. I'm guessing you would not go to that doctor, yeah, but, but I've met plenty of people, especially in, in America, who say, it's none of your business what he believes below the waist. Um, uh -huh. uh, he's an eye doctor. Is he a competent? Can he, can he repair your cataracts? Uh, um, and and I, I don't think he should be employed in a hospital, um, because, because what you're saying about that man is that he, he's got the kind of mind which is so adrift from reality, that even if he's a competent eye surgeon, um, I don't think he should. He could be trusted. Okay, so you're, you, you, interestingly, you are reacting in the way our ancestors, hearing the rustle in the bushes, are yeah. reacting in because way, yes. you, yeah. most of the time it's yeah. wind. Yes. Some of the time it's a leopard, yes. and that's a fear factor that creates a fear factor that overrides everything else. He's a good eye surgeon. He or she is a good eye surgeon. Right. But there's that lingering risk that the stork theory of reproduction might somehow affect the scalpel. I don't so you're, think you it fear need, that I'm not risk. sure it needs to, to affect the scalpel. I, I think it's something. Okay, so then, then you object on principle. I think so, yeah. Yeah, not yes. on practice. It's, yes. it's a principle or thing. Or the professor of geography who believes in the flat earth, but... But, but, but otherwise makes perfect but globes. Yes, 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 yes exactly. <laughs> Okay, so you're so you're you're a principled person. That's all that means. You have you think it should be a certain way, and everything surrounding it, even if in practice it doesn't manifest, you you kind of want the whole package to so, to be yeah. consistent. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so now given that, what do you do about it? Because um, I don't really do anything. You you want to change that, and we just admitted together that we are prisoners of this 
a, a mystical, magical ways of thinking and or illogical ways of thinking, and now you want to so you want to change the biological directive of the human mind. And I, how do you do that? I I like to use the phrase consciousness raising, okay. which is which is a feminist phrase. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, it started in the I, feminist I think, movement. I think that, that's where I first okay. heard it anyway. Mm -hmm. And consciousness raising um, is. So we're, we're not, I don't want to be dictatorial and say there should be a law against illogical thinking. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not that fascist. But um, you know what happened if you do pass law? If, let's imagine a future where all illogical people had to move to one particular state. It would be okay. wonderful. Yes. No, 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 no. But that that would be the state where like all the music and art would come from, right? All the the, the truly creative I people are some of the least logical people I've ever met. Yet. They create and they, they they make the world a little more interesting. But that that's my thing. If that were true, I would I'd go along with you. I'm not sure that. <laughs> that's a different issue. Whether that's or not that's issue. that's a true it's fact. A issue, yeah. Okay. Whether all right. So so what do you do? Do you, do you want to consciousness raise? Do you have tactics? Because I want a consciousness raise too. So I've got. Ta I want. Let's compare. Okay. I suspect your tactics may be better than mine. No. Um, because your 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 tactics, I think, are to lead by example. Yes. Um, to, um, to, 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 to practice logic, practice science, expose the wonder of science. I like to do all that as well. In fact, your book has the word wonder in it, your, 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 yes. your memoir. Yes. Uh, tell, remind me the name of it. An Appetite for Wonder. An Appetite for Wonder, which any scientist has and which most people have, I think. Yes, and it's the, actually it's the subtitle of another of my books, Unweaving the Rainbow, um, and the subtitle is um, something about, about um, an appetite for wonder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that book, by the way, I'm reading The, the Rainbow, is my attempt to join poetry to, to, to science. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, fray, the, the, the title comes from Keats's attack on Newton uh, for unweaving the rainbow. Keats thought that Newton was destroying the poetry of the rainbow by explaining the spectrum. Or completely destroying the mystery of it. Destroying yeah. the mystery of it. And, and the, the message of my book is that you don't, uh, by, by destroying the mystery, you increase the poetry, you don't, you don't decrease and it. And I try to go there in all of my work, whether or not I succeed, exactly. that's my intent. Exactly. So where do you differ from this? Uh, well, where else do you, where else where do you else go? Do I, I mean, I certainly want to go all the way with, the, with that. I'm, uh -huh. I'm with, say, um, Richard Feynman, who said, when I, when I look at a rose, um, uh, I see the same beauty as a, as a poet or a, or a painter sees in the rose, but I also get poetic inspiration from the fact that I know that the color is to attract insects and that this has come about by natural selection. I feel the same way about beautiful sunsets. Yeah. I, I think there's no more reproduced image when people want you to think of God than a sunset with beams of light yeah. coming out. It's all the color. My impurities in the, <laughs> in the atmosphere. Yeah. So I too, I deeply appreciate the splendor uh, of a magnificent sunset with a curtain of uh, twilight colors going from, you know, deep, uh, deep blue to sky blue and the red sun. But I also know that the surface of the sun is 6,000 degrees and there's Rayleigh scattering in the atmosphere. You have water droplets condensing to make yeah. clouds. And, and so, uh, so I, I agree with the Feynman approach to that. But now where else do you go? Where else do you um, take this? Maybe uh, I go a little bit further in the direction of good-natured ridicule uh, of absurd ideas like astrology, uh, like homeopathy. Um, but so you're defining, you're saying it's good-natured, but clearly the people who are, who are the, on the other side of your wit and intelligence, uh, would, are they saying you're being good-natured? Possibly not. I don't, Possibly. I don't really care about that. Um, Possibly. <laughs> um, no, I mean, oh, I, I feel stupid next to you. No, I, I, and I know all this stuff, all right? So oh, come on. No. <laughs> um, I, I, I have an eye to not just the, the astrologer that I'm talking to, uh -huh. but the, for example, the radio audience, or whatever it is that, that, are, that are listening in. Yes, the outside. larger, because, right, you have you have visible platforms where you share this. We both do. Yes. And, and, um, uh, it's, uh, the point has often been made to me, um, if you call somebody an idiot, you're not going to change his mind. Mm -hmm. And that's possibly true. But you may change the minds of a, a thousand people listening in. Uh, and so I'm, I'm less inhibited about calling him an idiot. I, I, I recall my own youth as an undergraduate being seduced by 
Teilhard de Chardin, that old French um, theologian, who wrote um, about the evolution of, well, Peter Meadow described as that tipsy, euphoristic prose poetry, which is one of the more tiresome manifestations of the French spirit. <laughs> A typical piece of Meadow um, mm -hmm. uh, arrogant wit, um, pat patrician wit, you could call it. Um, so th this man, I mean, prose poetry kind of drips off the page, and, and, and I was totally seduced by this as an undergraduate, mm -hmm. until I read Peter Meadow's review of the book, which contained things like what I just, I just quoted. Um, and uh, he said, another, another thing he said was, um, how have people come to be taken in by Taya de Shada? We have to remember that um, higher education has created a large body of people of cultivated tastes, educated far beyond their capacity to undertake analytical thought. <laughs> um, and I was being, in, in effect, Medawar wasn't talking to me, he wasn't saying, I'm an idiot, but as, a, as an undergraduate who had been fooled by this man, I took it as being, I'd been an idiot, I'd mm -hmm. been fooled, I'd been taken in, I'd been seduced by this uh, persuasive uh, bullshit. Okay, so, but it means you read something else more persuasive than that original That's document. That's right, but I didn't mind being told I'm an idiot. Okay. But you didn't have to agree with that next level of analysis. You could have said, You're, this person doesn't know what they're talking about. This writing is beautiful. And, and for example, uh, let's go back to when was it? 17... Uh, when was uh, William Paley's book? Uh, uh, 1802. 1802. Uh, 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 what is it? Natural Theology. Natural Theology. Nat the Natural Theology. Yeah. This is... I, I, I own that book, and I've read it, and or most of it. And he's making strong arguments for design in nature, and um, I guess this is the first example of the watch, yeah, yeah. The, the watch yeah. in the wild, if you in the forest and you find a watch, yeah. it has a function, a purpose, yeah. and, and, and uh, my, <laughs> my favorite rebuttal to that was, I, I first heard from Carl Sagan, who had said, um, sure, if you find a watch, people had thought about a watch long before that, so there, there's a whole, tr and there are watches that were not so good as this one. <laughs> yeah. There's actually an evolution of watches yes, before yeah. you get to the pocket watch. Yeah. And uh, people saying, if you look at a Boeing 747, someone designed it. Well, look at the history of airplanes. Yeah. Look at the ones that crashed. Yes. Look at the ones that were not that big, that yeah. couldn't hold people. Yeah. That, and so, in fact, um, there were a lot of fits and starts in even things humans design, as well as the fits and starts in evolution. Um, but my, my point is, if I don't know who to believe yet, and I see these these reasoned arguments, you know, uh, William Paley is not a, you know, he's not a thumping the Bible yeah, at you. Yeah, he's yeah. trying to think this through. Sure. And then I read you, and uh, and I have leanings to Paley anyway. Why? What what guarantee okay, do you have well, that you're going to be more effective than he is? Okay, I mean, I I dealt with Paley mostly in the Blind Watchmaker, mm -hmm. and if you if you read what I actually said, I said um, Paley makes a the Blind Watchmaker, excellent. one of your books. Yes, yes. sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Paley makes an excellent argu argument. It's, it's well, uh, well argued, well put. And articulated. And well articulated. Um, I have every sympathy with Paley's argument because he lived before Darwin. Um, and I said, uh, it's, a, it's an excellent argument, but it's gloriously and utterly wrong. Now, that's not ridiculing. That's actually dealing Paley a great deal of, of respect. In, in the day. Yeah, yes, yes uh, and and saying it's not Paley's fault that he was born before before Darwin, um, <laughs> and and that Paley would Paley understood the problem and mm -hmm. would probably have been very impressed if he'd read the Origin of Species. Okay, when it came along. so Pal who is Paley today? Is it you, or is it someone who would still be thinking what Paley want, wants to think? Uh, I think somebody who still uh, it wants to say what. Paley tried to say uh, is is benighted now because because now he ought to know better. Okay. Um, Given how he posed his arguments, you have confidence that in modern times he would have said, "Hey, that was flawed." I would I would like to think so, uh -huh. uh, I, and I can't be sure what Paley himself would would have said. But but certainly I de I never denigrated the strength of Paley's argument in a way he was just putting he was posing the problem, and you'd be surprised how many people today. Many scientists today underrate Darwinism because they don't understand what Paley understood very well, which is the wonderful 
illusion of design. I mean, there, there are plenty of scientists who don't understand how elegant and beautiful the living world actually is. They sort of think, well, what's the problem? I mean, it just sort of happened by chance. Right. Of course it bloody didn't happen by chance. It couldn't happen by chance. It had to happen by a very, very special process. And Paley understood that. He got that, that right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, even in my field, uh, Fred Hoyle, who is famous for yes. uh, criticizing the, art, the, the singularity origin of the universe and derisively call it the Big Bang, yes. which we still yes, use we still today. Use it. <laughs> uh, he did some calculation about how you might arrive at an eyeball from random com combinations of atoms, and it was some stupendously unlikely probability, but he didn't factor in that any variation on not being able to see it is better than not being able it's to see it. Yeah, it's cumulative. Yeah. And so, so the statistics are not start with atoms, come out with an eyeball. No. It start with atoms and you're slightly yeah. sensitive and then you're more sensitive yes. and you, you make an image. And so it, it, it accumulates in a direction that is of value to the organism. Yes. And I use the metaphor of mountain probable for that, where I have a mountain which on one side is an absolutely sheer precipice and on the other side is a gradual slope. Uh, and the eyeball is sitting on top of the, of the mountain. Getting it by random chance is equivalent to standing at the bottom of the mountain and leaping to the top in one leap, mm -hmm. which you can't do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's equivalent to a theological explanation, by the way, as well. But if you go around the other side of the mountain, you've got this nice gentle gradient, and you just walk step by step by step by step, uh, where you get increasingly uh, complex and increasingly beautiful eyes until mm -hmm. you get vertebrate eye, Interesting. which still has re revealing flaws, right. but it's nothing like jumping from the bottom to the top of the precipice. In one leap. And so many yeah. people think that evolution is about jumping from the bottom to the top mm -hmm. in one leap, yes. Okay, so you're, when you have the conversation with the individual, knowing you have a platform, even if the individual is insulted, or feels bad, or feels stupid, you're relying on the fact that there's some other people that were perhaps on a fence who could be swayed by your arguments. Yeah. So for me, I'm more the one-on-one, -on -one, I guess. I, I want to have the one-on-one -on -one conversation, and the eavesdroppers are imagining perhaps themselves there. Yes. And that's, that's, if I want to call it a tactic, that's, uh, I'm feeling the one-on-one. -on -one yes, okay. More but, I mean, than you, I'm feeling you, the you audience. Have a, you have an even larger, I mean, you have a very huge audi audience, and, and uh, I know you got some stick for um, some of the things in Cosmos. Yeah, yeah, we were blunt about some very basic yeah, facts yeah, there. Yes. More blunt in that context than I ever am one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, that was a collaboration. Yeah. Uh, the, the script was written by Andrewian yes. and Steve Soder, a colleague of mine, yes. two offices down. Yes. And so that was a collaboration, so I went places tactically that I wouldn't normally go just as an individual. Well, I think you were right but, to do so. But I endorsed it all. I mean, I yes. did it because I agreed. But, yes. but uh, in tactically, it did rub people in ways that I wouldn't normally have rubbed them. Do you mind that? I mean, I, I think, think of Well, then I, then I needed to spend time dealing with the fallout from it, so that was, it took yes. some effort uh, responding. Um, yeah. But, uh, and but, but you got, I mean, this was on Fox rather than PBS. Yes, it was on uh, Fox, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it, yeah, there's no bigger place to put science than yes. science on Fox yes. in prime time on a Sunday night. Yes. So, but, so, but you noted correctly that that tactic got some people angry. And but not people you need to respect. I mean, <laughs> <what? laughs> no, but I respect what everyone can be. I mean, I, I, I like hearing why people... Uh, can I give an example? Yeah. I'll give an example. And I, how would you have handled this case, all right? I have a relative, all right, who, whose father died, okay? So he's my cousin, she's the nephew, once removed. All right. She, she's the niece, once removed. She's alone in the room with her father. The father is dead in a half-open casket. She reports to me. This is weeks later. By the way, she, she's a real estate agent, all right, and majored in accounting. Okay. So this is, uh, all right, all right. She said her father sat up and she had a conversation with him. And I said, well, what, what transpired? And she said, well, she, he said, don't worry, I'm in a better place. And she said, I'm glad, we're sad you're gone, but I'm glad to hear. And so that was a conversation. She said this, flat-footed, conveyed this conversation to me. So I said, okay, how am I going to deal with this? This is family, how am I going to handle this? I said, here's what I did. I said, 
Next time this happens, ask him questions that could be really useful on this side of that barrier. Yes. Like, where are you? Yes. Uh, are you wearing clothes? Yes. Where did you get the clothes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there money I, where I you like are? That. Is yes. there, what's the weather like? Yes. Who else is there? Yes. How old are you there? Yes. In your mind's eye, are you young or are yes. you old? Yes. Is grandma there? Yes. How old is she? If grandma's where she is, would she make herself old or would she be young again? Ask questions. I think that's a terrific answer. Where you get, where you get information, and so, so now she's on notice. Next time this happens, she said, every time I see her, she said, "I got it. We're gonna go there." And so okay. now she's got her own little experiment that she's okay. gonna well, talk. That, Next time, dead people sit up and talk yeah. to her. It's like uh, Carl Sagan when uh, he was talking about people who claim to be abducted by aliens. Yeah. These aliens are enormously more advanced than we. Said, did you ask them? about Goldbach's conjecture. Did you ask them uh, about to, to prove Fermat's last theorem? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, long-standing problems in our own yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah. But once we advance yes, some things, yes, they yes. exploit this yes. fact. <laughs> yes, I think that. So what would you, so if I just ask, what would you have done? I wouldn't have thought of that. I wish I had. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm genuinely curious as to, I mean, do, do you think she was lying? Do you think she had a hallucination? She's, oh. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm a trained astrophysicist, so my first explanation is that it was a, a hallucination because everything we know about dead people, they don't sit up and have a conversation. And of course, there are no witnesses or video, so which would make a better witness than a human witness. But uh, I, I didn't care whether how real she thought it was. What I cared was that I gave her tools, I think, I gave her tools so that the next time this happens, she can separate an objective reality from what might have been in her mind. Yes. And yes. then she arrives at that conclusion herself, not by me telling her yeah, she's I, hallucinating. I think, that's, I think that's, that's terrific. I mean, if she was still if she was still grieving and still mourning, then I would have been inhibited in saying you were you were hallucinating. Out of sensitivity. Yes, out of sensitivity. Okay. And, and so there is a soft side to. Oh, Richard sure there is. Yeah, <laughs> Let the um, record show, <laughs> Richard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he can be a puppy. But, yeah. but 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 once, but setting that aside, I think I would say something. Perhaps I wouldn't use the word hallucination, which sounds a bit sort of um, negative. Mm -hmm. I'd say something like, um, I think you probably drifted off to sleep and had a dream, something like that. Because mm -hmm. um, these are solemn moments, right? Yes, and you yeah, can. I mean, everybody, we all dream every night, and we and we have experiences in the, in our dreams which are utterly unreal, utterly surreal. And most of us don't know we're dreaming. And, and, right. and, but I mean, it, it gives you an insight into what it would be like to be insane, actually. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Every single night I, 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 I go insane because the dreams that I have, uh, any, rational, any rational person could immediately say, this is not real. This yeah. is, this is um, and um, so I think that would be another, that would be a reasonably sympathetic way of, of Say, but I, I like your, your way better. Well, so, I, so I'm just saying that's kind of my MO, if you will, just my, my methods of, of intersection. And uh, so if I, if I were to broaden this to a more culturally present, uh, uh, as you might call it, delusion, the, yeah. the, the God delusion, yeah. um, I, again, I don't really care how people think or feel about deity about it and I, I value the concept of a free country and in, in the United States I think unlike England in the United States uh, of course there's no mention of God in the Constitution the very document that established the country and that protects people's rights to worship whoever they want without the government asserting this because there's no place the government can draw from to tell them who they but should worship. But that's constantly under threat. Uh, but, but, perhaps, right. It but really is. At this moment, I, I, you're right. So, okay, so, <coughs> so, um, so what really solves that one is someone says, we want to Christianize the Constitution or whatever, but you can say the value of this is, uh, it, suppose you get outnumbered by this other religious group. And then they want to Muslimize the Constitution, or Judify the Constitution, or 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 Buddhify the Constitution. Would you want that? And they say, No, no, no. Well, this is the way we protect everybody. So I, I value freedom of thought, of action, provided it doesn't infringe on others. So 
I, I start there, and from there I move forward, and I say, um, uh, where do we, where, what do you do in modern society? When we know science works, and we know how it works, and it establishes objective truths, but in, in, in a world where people want to have freedom of thought, where do you, where do you come down on that? The United States Constitution is unrivaled in the world, and it's, and it's um, uh, as you say, it's a total separation of church and state. The, the practice is that not a single member of the United States Congress admits to being a non a non-believer. Mm -hmm. That's a statistical nonsense, mm -hmm. and it's not conceivable that, it, that that's really right. True. Was it five hundred and whatever the number? Five hundred and thirty-five people. Yeah. Every single one of them mm -hmm. uh, claims to believe in a, in, a, in a supernatural higher power. A very substantial. So some number. of them are going to be lying, is what you're saying. Some of them have got to be lying, so that a substantial number of our elected rep your elected rep representatives in this country. And you are a British citizen visiting America. Yes, right? I'm, so I'm, I, I'm speaking from outside, but but it's it's very sad that you are represented in this country by people who are manifestly lying mm -hmm. and are forced to lie. I don't blame them. They're forced to lie because otherwise they won't get re-elected. But you also sound surprised that a politician lies. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. I mean, <laughs> Reality let's, check. Okay, let's be cynical. And, right. and, and, okay, of all the things they lie about, it's just one of them in, in the list. Just, it's just, okay. just one of them. Mm -hmm. But it's very sad that they have to lie about their innermost beliefs, and they have to put on a mock sincerity, uh, and they have to say, God bless America, with mock sincerity. Um, it is tragic that... Uh, people who don't want to lie about that, people people like you and me who are absolutely sincere about our, our beliefs, could not get elected. And uh, that, I, I think you're painting a too rosy view when you say, well, the Constitution protects. Okay. The Constitution they protect, but the in legal practice. system, in practice, the Supreme Court doesn't always. Um, so what you're saying is the line that says there shall be no religious test for office of yes. the president, that may be true legally, but pr in practice, there is a religious test. Exactly. Yeah. There, there most certainly is. Uh, and uh, the, it, the voters in, impose that. In, in yes. It, it's, their, it's their democratic right to do so. But don't you feel the urge to get up and persuade the voters, look, you're, 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 in, you're imposing a religious test, which is unconstitutional. You don't know, you don't realize that the atheists, the agnostics, the secularists, who seek office are excellent people in many cases. They're people like you. They're people that you would enjoy having a drink with. They're, they're, they're your friends. Um, but they don't admit to their beliefs because they know they won't get elected if they do. Don't you feel the urge not just to persuade the, the legal system, but to persuade ordin ordinary voters that they're barking up the wrong tree? They've misunderstood. So let's, let's help me define this. So we have. Atheist, which I think is a, what generally understood what that would mean. In its simplest terms, it's a theist. You have no no belief in, in yes. In, in, in you, a God. you don't necessarily positively deny. You don't say, "I know there is no God." You say mm -hmm. there is no evidence for right. it. And so, how would, and secularism as a movement? How would you sort of cap, how would well, you frame that? Well, I understand that the, the de definition may be a bit different to, uh, across the Atlantic. across the pond. Um, uh -huh. um, to me, secularism means exactly a separation of church and state. So you can have a deeply religious secularist? In, in Britain or in India, uh, you could. Uh -huh. um, but it may be that in America the word secularist is understood differently, and that's fine. I mean, words do shift their meaning a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I don't know about the meaning of secularist. I think the word atheist has problems of sheer association. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, you probably know the story of Julia Sweeney. They, comedian who uh, did well, I know the comedian but what's the story okay yeah. she she did a, 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 a she's from Saturday Night Live a, a it, it, decades ago yes, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. she did a wonderful sort of one woman monologue on stage called letting go of God which was the story her own story mm -hmm. of how she escaped from her own I think family. I heard of this but I never saw okay. it okay okay well there, there are some lovely moments in it like when she first first heard a still small voice in her head saying there is no God there is no God. My God, there is no God. <laughs> um, um, I can't, I, I, well, maybe I made that last, but I don't know. Um, but then, but then, why? You know, how how does the Earth keep going round the Sun? And oh yeah, oh yes, there's Newton's laws. And and, and, and but then the, the towards the end, she has a wonderful story about how 
uh, it got into a newspaper that she'd become an atheist, and her mother read this. And her mother ran up in, in a panic and said, well, I don't mind you not believing in God, but an atheist? <laughs> okay. So that's one of the problems we're up against. Okay. Whether that comes from McCarthy, whether that means that's because atheist was in the 50s synonymized was associated with, with, with communism. communism. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, but anyway. Which is uh, why we ended up putting God on our currency. In the 1950s, Yes, yeah. and it's in the, in the yeah, halls of, of Congress, yeah. uh, in God We Trust, yes, and, and in the Pledge of yeah. Allegiance. So it, it may be that the very word atheist needs to be on public relations ground a casualty, <laughs> um, and you can substitute non-believer or, or unbeliever or, or, or secularist. Yeah, you. I can tell you that there in just in my life, there's been sort of a land grab of me by atheists to claim me yeah. as an atheist. And and I've spoken on this in, in some various videos. My great objection is not simply whatever the definition of atheist is, I just don't want a title. I, I don't want yeah. to be labeled on the grounds that if someone comes to me expecting that I fulfill a title, or, or some label, as I should say, then they will presuppose they already know my arguments in advance. And I'd rather they hear me from scratch and hear me yeah. build, build a con an argument and a conversation, and then we build it together. A very subtle point I'll just insert here. When I taught in college, I taught at a transition between when you had sort of transparencies that you could write on or you can pre-prepare them, and some professors would just slap on a fully laid out transparency and there were all the notes, and they would speak to the notes. And I was supposed to building it up. It's supposed to build it up, and I said, no. If you do that, they'll just, co they'll just, it's like yeah, they'll yeah. just copy. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you draw the first part of the diagram, here's an axis of temperature, and here's time, and here's, and then you assemble the ideas together, and and, and it's way deeper understanding of what's going on. That's a very good uh, didactic point for actually teaching. I'm not sure it applies to what you were saying before about being labeled. I mean, you wouldn't... No, it does in the conversation. If you don't know anything about me, you have to learn it no, but from if you, scratch. If you were known to be a rationalist, for example, I mean, you, if, you, if, you, if you were known to be a, a, a realist, if you were known to be somebody who bases his conclusions on evidence, right. um, would you feel the need to hide that label um, on the same grounds? On this, in the sense that someone coming into the conversation may be defensive in advance. Mm. They may have a posture in advance. They might try to line up some arguments <clears throat> in advance. And it denies the purity of a conversation that could have happened. The, the, the sincerity of a conversation that I value in a one-on-one -on -one encounter. That presupposes you've got time to develop. <laughs> Yes, it does. Uh, okay. I, um, <laughs> yes, it does. Well, I think I would be the same. I mean, if I if I were if I were going to have dinner with somebody, uh -huh. uh, and um, well, I wanted to persuade her that, that, that of my point of view, I don't think I would say, right, I'm an atheist. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I think I would develop the thing step by step, develop the transparency one step at a time, mm -hmm. kind of thing. But. Um, when I'm in, when I, if, if I were living in a country where it was impossible to get elected, if you if you had that label, I think a little bit like gay pride. I mean, I think I think it's like it's like standing out and saying, um, I'm gay, or uh, I'm not gay, but I but I believe in gay marriage or something. But like I think that. part of the difference there is, and I think I've got this right. Uh, in the secular movement, there is an urge to get more people to think that way or to be that way, on the grounds that you have a better society for having done so, or a more rationally deciding society. I don't know a single gay person who has an, who has an objective to turn everybody gay. They just want themselves to be respected for what they are, but they're not trying to make everybody else gay. And, and, and that's different from such as in the book The God Delusion. There's no book you know, the, uh, the straight delusion, you all, we're, we're the right way to be. So, so to me, there's a difference in, in objective between the, the gay movement and the secular movement, if you will. Yeah. I think you're exaggerating the desire of the secular movement to uh, 
convert everybody to our point of view. We're not like missionaries knocking on the door and sort of say, saying, have you, have you found Jesus? And that sort of thing. Um, or have you not found Jesus? <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> have it, you lost Jesus yet? It, 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 it isn't really like that. It's, ra it's rather more, um, we want to convert you, not to atheism, but to the view that atheists should, be, should, should not be discriminated against. Uh, okay. that, 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 that there should not be... That's a, a purer message there. It's a purer yeah. message, and, and it's, it, it's a very important one in the, in the United States where, uh, where atheists can't get elected to Congress. You, you don't have to say, yes, I'm converted, I'm now an, a born-again atheist, but you have to say, okay. um, I, 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 no, I no longer will discriminate a, a, against uh, uh, somebody because of his lack of religion when I, when I vote. I will look at the, look at the record and, and vote. On, on other grounds, um, there's a there are real problems with uh, young people coming out, just like like there was coming out as gay, um, with their parents. I mean, you get you know teenagers thrown out of the house mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because they've come out as an atheist. Well, we were on stage last night for our Star Talk Live, and there's a question that I deferred to, but I wanted to be uh, honest with the. Uh, we were on stage last night. And during the Q&A, someone came up and had a very long-sounding question. I deferred my answer, your answer, to his question for this interview. And he said he, he early on in his life, he became an atheist. But then when he notified his parents, they were, they, they were shocked. Yes. Damn near ready to reject him, disown him. What, do you have suggestions for situations One of the like things, that? I mean, we, we've got this uh, campaign going called Open Secular, Open, mm -hmm. Openly Secular. And one of the things we're trying to do is to give us give sort of um, uh, a pack of, of hints for that for that sort of thing. But there's a, there's an an amazing. It's like how do you know if you're secular? <laughs> yes. no, I mean, how do you, how do you break it to your parents if they're if they're? And it's very similar to, to the problem of breaking to your parents you're you're gay. Uh -huh. There's a, a a really rather tragy comic YouTube film of a boy of about sixteen uh, breaking it to his mother that he's an atheist. And it, the conversation takes place in the kitchen, and he's sort of—he's well, he's not very articulate, young man. He's sort of sort of, "Mom, I, I gotta tell you, I'm an atheist." And she says, "You're an atheist, right? No Christmas presents for you. Um, <laughs> you're <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> and, and tomorrow you're going to see the bishop." Okay. And and um, so she's kind of hysterical, and the boy's kind of hanging his head and, and mm -hmm. the thing. And, and his father's kind of... I'm still laughing at the no Christmas presents. Yeah, I know, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. good. Um, and the father is kind of sitting slumped in his chair, sort of, you know, not really wanting to be part of this. The only, I mean, I, I worry a little bit about why somebody was filming it. I mean, it doesn't seem to be plausible that, that somebody yeah. would have actually had a, had a camera running. Mm -hmm. So it may, it may be a fake. But if it is, it's not a very well acted, you know, sort of, it, it, it has the... But even if it is a fake, <laughs> it's not an unimaginable scenario. It, it's, it's so therefore, that's what common. we should be responding common. to I here. know it's common. I get letters uh, from my foundation, the Richard Dawkins Foundation. Mm -hmm. gets For science letters. and reason. For reason and science. Oh, reason and science. Yeah. Okay. Um, gets letters all the time from, especially young people talking about their parents. Sometimes people um, uh, worry about losing their spouse. So of course, every time in a marriage, if you announce to your spouse you're gay, you lose your spouse, 100% of the time. <laughs> of course not. Um, no, uh, no, if you're gay, well, how do you play that? You well, gotta, yeah, that's yeah. A, there might be special problems there mm -hmm. with your spouse, but, but um, uh, we, with my foundation a little bit earlier, sponsored a thing called the Clergy Project, which was an attempt to help to rescue, really, clergy people who have lost their faith. And uh, the Clergy Project, uh, we, we, we set up a website, a confidential website, where clergy people who have become atheists uh, were able to converse with each other, compare, commiserate. Notes, commiserate, cry on each other's shoulders, uh, and uh, often under assumed names. I mean, they're, they're really afraid of being detected. It's, it's rather like a sort of um, secret society where they use false names for fear of being outed, mm -hmm. for fear of spies getting in and, and, and recognizing them. And we're now up to, I think, more than 500 mm. of these clergymen and women uh, from all denominations who uh, have become atheists. And they're, going, they're carrying on living the lie. They're going on preaching sermons and, and, and conducting 
So well, they have that training, so it's not like... They have that training, they're not, they're not trained to do much else. I mean, some of them, one by one, they're beginning to come out. And they get jobs as counselors or... or, or oh, yeah, of course. Uh, that would be ideal. Yeah, yes, or carpenters, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Jesus, yes, a carpenter, sorry. yes. Okay. Um, but um, but it, it's only a trickle coming out at the, the moment. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I felt it was... A, I mean, originally, my original plan was to try to raise enough money to give them scholarships for retraining uh, at the, for, for other professions, and of course we couldn't raise enough money for that. But we did. We, we had enough money to set up this website, uh, and it, they do get a feeling of bonding, a, a feeling of fellowship. This, they, they can talk to each That's other. It's the internet at its best. You find yes, people. Yes, and they, but they can't talk to their spouse very often. They can't talk to their to their children. Uh, they can't talk to their parishioners. These would be denominations where you can marry, so it would not be Catholic. Priests. It wouldn't be so Catholic, no, but, but um, uh, so they they fear being outed because they are respected pillars of the local community. Uh, they're going to lose all that. They're going to be ostracized in many cases. So is this, are we living in different times from a century ago? What, did Darwin create a deeper divide? Did, was there a community of religious people who dug their heels in stronger after Darwin? Because I don't remember this level of conflict I rem well, maybe I just was unaware. I don't claim perfect knowledge of total social cultural mores around the world, but I remember a day where religious people went to church or synagogue or mosque on the weekend, and during the week you went to school and learned science. Yes. And that was kind of a happy line in the sand. Yes. And that line in the sand is being sort of rubbed away. I, I think that is. I think that's that, a real change. Yeah, it's not I, just I, my I, perception. I, I, well, I don't live in America. I'm, I, I think it probably is a real change, yes. Um, From the 1800s to the 1900s? Oh, oh well, no, I thought it, but that might be different. I mean, I, you're talking about within our life. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. Both. I have asking both yes. questions, but yes. yes. Oh, in, da in Darwin's time, um, there was quite a a, a ready uptake of Darwinism among uh, educated clergy people, people mm -hmm. like Charles Kingsley. Um, and and, and not, much of these names, like, yeah, of course, I, Charles Kingsley. <laughs> We're well, Americans uh, here, we uh, don't sorry, know any of these people. Ch um, <laughs> Charles Kingsley, the... No, I just like that you've got all these names, and, and they must be basic okay, knowledge I mean, to all... I don't, I, don't know, all <laughs> I don't know American culture. Brit-educated so. people, yeah. right, um, right. Ch Charles Kingsley. We know Kim Kardashian, then you know. Okay, okay. go ahead. <laughs> no, I didn't write me that. Charles and we know Kingsley. her but buttocks. That's what we got here. All right. Charles Kingsley wrote a book called The Water Babies, which is uh -huh. a famous children's book. And, and uh, he was a clergyman, I think. Mm -hmm. And he was a friend of Darwin. Uh, and he immediately uh, adopted uh, evolution when the origin of species came out, as did quite a lot of other clergymen. Other clergymen didn't, and famously the Bishop of Oxford, Sophie Samuel, of course. And they would draw. They would draw him as a as an ape. You know, a hairy yes, ape. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So they, they focused on the on the ape aspect rather than on the more general the total evolution of life. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think you're probably right that, that that when you were a boy at school, it was uh, you, you know church was something you did. So yeah, yes. and that was respected and yes. sacred, and the rest of life was the rest of life. But I, I it, it does appear to be a real phenomenon that people who are not religious in America today are in danger of being ostracized. And this is not true in places like Silicon Valley, where I've just been. I mean, I kept meeting people in Silicon Valley who said, well, what's the problem? I mean, I'm an atheist. Everybody knows I'm an atheist. Uh -huh. But they live in Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They, 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 they don't live in the, the, the prairies. How about the UK or Europe in general? It's, it's, it's very atheistic, isn't that correct? Yes, and paradoxically, many European countries have an established church, and that, and that may be no accident. It may be that the established church uh, makes religion kind of boring. It's 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 sort of uh, whereas in in America religion when you is have choice of religion. free enterprise choice yeah uh, you advertise your mega church and I can and, follow the preachers I like exactly. and then and then you, do, uh, you 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 go to this to this church rather than that church and um, that's in fascinating. Britain, people don't go to church except to be married and buried. But, and when my, the the brief time I spent there while we were filming Co Cosmos, that's when I learned. You know, th there's this thing called the Anglican Church. Yes. But it's it's an administrative entity practically, and beyond that, nobody goes yes, to it, church. Yes, it crowns the monarch. And That's it, and, yes. <laughs> and then it's done. Yes. <laughs> yes. And the rest of Europe is. I think Europe is very variable. Uh, Poland, for example, is almost exclusively Catholic and rather loyally so. Um, Scandinavia, 
Not, uh, so, not, not so much. Not that Scandinavia, the more or less totally dropped religion, except for Islam, incidentally. Mm -hmm. um, Islam um, in Scandinavia. In, in Scandinavia. Um, and I, I think um, France and uh, sort of the traditionally Catholic countries, um, France, Italy, Spain, there's a very strong anti-clericalism. Um, mm. But I don't know very much about, about Europe. Uh, but I do get the impression that, it's more than an impression, that America, the, the United States, stands out like a sore thumb mm. for its religiosity. You have to get more or less right over Europe to the Middle East before you, before you start getting um, a, a, a similar preoccupation with, with religion. Now, the, uh, if we go back in time, essentially every famous scientist uh, pre-20th century is religious. Galileo is religious. He's a, he's a devout Catholic. Um, Newton was Anglican, but, but he objected to the Trinity, I guess. He had some issues. So it's not uncommon to have religious... Uh, strongly religious people in modern times cite the religiosity of scientists of the past. And if you look at the, the numbers today, I, I, I haven't checked the very latest ones, but when I last did check, in the United States, it's as many as a third of practicing publishing scientists would claim to be religious in the unambiguous way where you ask, do you pray yeah. to have an all-powerful being intercede in your daily affairs? So. So are, you can't then say being religious is in and of itself the problem. It would have to, you'd have to modify that argument to say it's when you want to do this with your religion that it's a problem. But otherwise, for all these other people, it's just fine. Okay, let me take that. Uh, I, I think we want to make a big distinction between the historical point and the present day. Sure, I, I conflated um, them. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. um, Newton, Galileo, pre-Darwin. Pre you couldn't not be religious pre at least I mean, you could, but mm -hmm. you would have to be very, very um, uh, stalwart in your in your skepticism, right. uh, because uh, it's some. I look around the world; it kind of looks almost obvious. This is going to get misquoted. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it looks almost obvious that there had to be a, dis a designer and until Darwin came along. Um, who can blame Newton and Galileo? So I'm I'm deeply unimpressed. Okay, by, by that argument. By that okay. argument. Um, the one-third of scientists in America, that's approximately correct yeah. by, by the polls that I've seen. Um, if you move off from scientists generally to members, fellows of the National Academy... The elite scientists. The elite scientists at, or in the Royal Society, um, studies have been done of both the American National Academy and the British Commonwealth Royal Society. Almost identical. They're corresponding... The uh, corresponding elite bodies of, of, of uh, elite academies of science. Mm -hmm. Um, about 10%. So that number drops? The number drops dramatically. Now, I've seen you make the point that we still have to worry about the 10%. And that, and well, well I, I don't think I used the word worry, because that, <coughs> that was how I, people wanted to characterize me. But m my actual point was, uh, we have people such as yourself out there you know, making the case to the public. But I don't see you making the case to the third of scientists. Our professional brethren, who, what hope do you have of converting the public, guiding them away from their, 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 leading them to more rational ways, when our own scientific community is representing in just that way to the level of a third. Okay. Um, and, and even in the elite group, that 10% is not 0%. No, that's right. So clearly there's something you're never going to get to. I think that's right. Um, you have to put a little bit of caution on that. If you ask them what they actually believe. The, the, the scientist? Yes, yes ask uh -huh. the scientists what they actually believe. They, they may say they're religious, they may say I'm Jewish or I'm Christian. If you actually ask these... Um, is, this one-third? The, the, the one-third, and perhaps more particularly the 10%, the, the um, what they believe, they will talk about uh, mystery of the universe, and, and, and they have a sort of reverent attitude, which I have as well, and I think you have. Um, but then if you say, do you actually believe in anything supernatural? Or you call yourself Christian, but you believe that Jesus was born of a virgin or rose from the dead? Of course they don't. Mm -hmm. um, and so you've got to kind of subtract them off, I suspect. The, you subtract off the Einsteinian... Um, so the spirit. Einsteinian is that what, Spinoza's God, Spinoza's where if there's God. a God of the universe that 
that is responsible for laws and things and, and re responsible for the universe that science observes, but, but, but which is kind of untestable at yeah, some I don't level. think it would even be, be responsible. I think it was just God is the universe, which is a bit different from, from thinking that there's an intelligence that, mm -hmm. that, that, um, that started it all. Um, so I think you want to subtract them off. Okay. Einstein, unfortunately, muddied the issue by using the word God yeah. rather freely. And everybody wants to claim, claim and him and for And people their... therefore want to claim Einstein, rather like you're afraid of being, of being, being claimed. Well, I just want to make my own arguments. Exactly. I don't want to use somebody else's argument. I, Einstein used God as a metaphor and he said things like, what I really want to know is, did God have a choice in creating the universe? He simply meant, is there only one way for a universe to be? Yeah. Uh, or when he said, God doesn't play dice, he doesn't play dice, but he doesn't play dice. Um, he, he, he was expre expressing skepticism of the Heisenberg. Or the phrase, I want to know the mind of God. Yeah, that, yeah, yes, yeah. that's right. Um, so sub subtract them off, and then you, you are left with, with a few who actually do believe in the virgin birth. And, and I, I don't know what to make of them. I mean, I think that they're, um, as it were, traitors to science. <laughs> traitors. <laughs> um, <laughs> But they still do science again. But we, well, we, I mean, like these, you uh, object philosophically. Like the, as the uh, astrophysicist that I told you about, yeah, who, yes, who um, um, I, I think he's a traitor to science, and, and uh, I, I well, okay, we've, been, we've been there already. Um, but but uh, I, perhaps I tell you, I mean, my, my British foundation. I have a British foundation as well as an American one. Is uh, it the same foundation but it's, it's separately yeah, incorporated? It's, it's got, the, got, got the same name, separately mm -hmm. incorporated. Um, we did a survey, but we commissioned a public opinion poll, and we chose the very week of the census, which took place in 2011. And the census in Britain actually asks what your religion is, and you have to tick a box that says Christian, Jewish, uh, Muslim, etc., or, or none. Um, so we sampled, you, we commissioned a professional polling organization to sample those who tick the Christian box to find out what they really believe. Obviously, it was only a sample, it was a couple of thousand. Um, but it was done professionally. And so we asked them questions like, OK, you take the Christian box. Do you believe Jesus is your Lord and Saviour? No. Do you believe Jesus was born of a virgin? No. Do you believe Jesus rose from the dead? No. Then why do you call yourself a Christian? Oh, because I like to think of myself as a good person. So that's the kind of level that, 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 that that's the kind of level that people will think to in agreeing to tick the Christian box, to get the label, to accept the label of Christian. We then said, well, um, you like to think of yourself as a good person. It, it, it wasn't sequential, they were all separate questions, but you like to think of yourself as a good person. When you're faced with a moral dilemma, when you're faced with a moral decision in your own life, do you turn to your religion or do you turn to your friends? Do you, do you turn to your cultural background, etc.? That's an excellent um, question. I want to comment on that in a minute, okay. but go on. Um, Beautiful question. I think question. it was only, uh, uh, only about 9% said that, that of the people who ticked the Christian box who said they turned to their, to their religion, although a majority said that they ticked the Christian box because they like to think of themselves as a good person. So all this is showing, really, is be skeptical when people tell you that they're religious. Be skeptical when people tell you, I am a Christian or I am a Jew. Especially if they say, I'm a Jew, that probably means uh, that they are loyal to Jewish traditions. And yeah, in America, generally, it yeah. means that, that yeah. there's a, unless they're full out Hasidic yes. uh, practicing, yeah. they, yeah. Uh, Ju Judaism is a culture more than it is a religion yes. here, in, here in the United States. Which is fine. Um, I was uh, interviewed uh, for the New Yorker magazine, and at some point the interviewer asked, how, was I re raised in any religion? I said, yes, I was raised Catholic. And that was actually the first time I'd ever said that publicly. I, was, I never tried to hide it, just no one ever asked. And, and I said, but we, it was kind of like we used to go to church weekly and then it kind of faded to once a month. Then we became ashes and palms, kind of like, <laughs> where you just go on the holidays and, and of course we celebrated Christmas. And, but I, what I, the real point I, I wanted to make in this article was that it did not influence in any obvious way any decisions we made any, uh, my mother never came to her and said, you shouldn't do this because Jesus is watching. There was no such no. Uh, interaction in the household. But the urge to say in an article on Neil deGrasse Tyson, he was Catholic, but now he's a scientist and lost his Catholic ways, as though there was some big transition Quite. that happened. There was no transition. There was no, tra <laughs> there was no, uh, it's not, so, 
I see the urge of people to want to make these associations, but in, in our household, there was never what would Jesus do. It's what, was a, what would a rational thinking person do in this situation. Yes. And, and that's how my whole life unfolded. I think there is also a kind of cultural loyalty which is not so strong as the, as the Jewish case which you mentioned, but um, I, I, especially perhaps in a place like Northern Ireland, which is, which is politically riven between Catholics and Protestants. Um, I mean, the, the joke about, yes, you're an atheist, but are you a Catholic atheist or a Protestant atheist? Um, is that it, true? Well, it's, a, it's, it's almost a cliche in, in, in Northern Ireland. Um, but there is a sort of thing, you, you ask, well, I sure as hell not a Catholic, you know, but so I'd better say I'm Protestant. Okay. Um, and, 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 uh, well, this is the problem with labels again. Uh, yes, so, it so, is, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's what that is. It's all very well to say that in America there's a constitutional separation between church mm -hmm. and state, but how do you deal with the fact that a non-believer cannot get elected to high office. Yeah, uh, the closest I've come to addressing that was on Bill Maher. We, at that time, Congress was at some kind of voting impasse, and everyone was complaining that they can't agree. And I just thought about it. I reflected on a time when I was younger, when I had the World Book Encyclopedia, and I, I remember opening up to the section on the presidents. There's a picture of every single president and a little mini bio. And I was just intrigued. I said, I wonder what professions these presidents were. And there they were. Attorney, 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 farmer, attorney, attorney, businessman, attorney, attorney. And I said, well, first, what is an attorney? Because I didn't know that was the same as lawyer at the time I discovered this. But I said, why are they all lawyers? What? Aren't there other things in the world? I want to be an astrophysicist and maybe uh, can other people be present? If and I thought that was just odd. And it just sat in my head for decades, because I'm that old. And, and then I realized we had an impasse, and I think, well, what do lawyers do? They, they're trained arguers. And a lawyer who is paid to take a position will take that position whether or not that position is true, because they're paid to do so. And I thought, that is the, a recipe for disaster in a Congress that has to come to agreement. So I lamented the absence of professions that specialize in having to make hard decisions on time and on budget. So I thought maybe a Congress that had more scientists, engineers, where objective truth matter, a, a, a business people who make decisions every day that are based in objective truth because money is at stake. I just felt the mixture wasn't serving a nation where decisions had to be made. And in that context, I didn't care how religious people are. How they, uh, I didn't care whether the, I wasn't thinking, is it a religious scientist or not, a religious engineer or not. I care about the, decision, the decisions people have to make and how they make them. And so I, I, I care less whether someone is religious than whether they have the capacity to think logically. But more broadly, what I object to is Dogma being the foundation of governance. And yes, dogma is a big part of re religion. But dogma, are, there's, a, there's other dogma. There's, there's, there's anything where you think something is true but have no evidence for it, and you want everyone else to think that way, that's dogma. So you're objecting to religion. I'm objecting, objecting to dogma under which you find many expressed... I think I'm objecting to discrimination. I mean, if you, if, if, if you heard that uh, nobody would ever vote for a farmer uh, because they had a complete misconception about what farmers are, are, are like, wouldn't you... Okay, so you'd you, want to educate people. I okay. want to educate people. I mean, if, okay. if, 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 if a gay person could not get elected... All right. Okay, so, so let me... So I guess I, I discovered two variables there. So one of them is... I. I want people who know how to make decisions in Congress, and uh, I'm sorry, but I don't count lawyers among those no, who, no, no. who can, yeah. uh, when you have two scientists, if we disagree, it's because one of us is wrong, the other is wrong, or we're both wrong, and we both agree with that fact, that yeah. those three possibilities exist, and that we both are waiting for more or better data to resolve it, so that we will one day agree, and then go out and have a beer. Lawyers don't it doesn't happen that way anytime I've seen lawyers in conflict. All right, so now, with regard to can anybody become president? If most of an electorate, what's the number in the United States, 
claims religiosity. Yeah, not as high as that, actually. But, but it's more like... More, what, two-thirds? Maybe 70. 70? Okay. Oh, no, so it maybe oh, because the fraction of people who disassociate from organized religion is growing. Yeah. So you, you fold them in, yeah. you get 30% of them. All right. But if most districts, voting districts in the country, have a majority of people who are religious, why should you not expect that they elect religious people to represent them? Now, I'm but, not surprised at that. But, what you should be surprised is if you go to Silicon Valley, where everybody is devoutly atheist, and they elect a religious person. Then you say, this is your district. It's time to vote someone in who isn't. I don't think... They we, do have the power. We, we, we don't have to say that, 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 that the, the, the person elected should have the same beliefs as their electorate, but the electorate should not... That's be, kind of what representative government no, is. They should not be prejudiced. They should not, they should not say, I will under no circumstances vote for a gay person. Or I will under no, no circumstances vote for uh, somebody with red hair. Okay, so that was true until you had gay communities that then elected representatives who could speak their case. The earliest good examples of that, the mayor of San Francisco. Okay, so then you say, okay, the, the, the city didn't, didn't collapse. You know, the, then there, it's, it's, it's by example rather than by so now so what you need is go back to silicon valley if it's as atheistic as you say i, I haven't ever hung out there time for them to elect a representative who's who's atheist or secular or any combination of the two that person then goes to congress and leads in ways people say hey that's i like that that's a good idea and realizing that idea could not have come from other people because their brain isn't well, that that's way. Great. I, mean, I would love that to happen, and I, I'd like to 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 help. You that. can't go to but, you can't go to Utah and say elect someone who's not Mormon. They all went there so that they could have yeah, Mormon but, representation. But, but the black that, female who just got into Congress, I'm told, is Mormon. Yeah, but from from you, Utah, you, you can fight prejudice without you. It, it, it doesn't. I mean, it'd be nice to do it that that way and have somebody somebody elected, and I'd like to see that happen. But there there is rampant prejudice which is based upon mis misconception and what we're trying to do is to remove that misconception by showing people these little video things we're, we're doing showing that 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 atheists non-believers secularists these are the, uh, the are, people outing themselves yes, yes. outing uh -huh. themselves and they're, they're they're nice people they're they're, they're, <laughs> they're nurses they're doctors they're they're, they're bus drivers um that they don't have two horns and a tail i mean that you'd be amazed at the <laughs> You'd be amazed at the misconceptions that, 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 are, are, that are around. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, equating of atheism with, com with communism, for, for example, mm -hmm. which, which dates from the 1950s. Um, the, the story of Julia Sweeney's mother. I mean, these are, um, these are worrying things which would worry any decent citizen. So again, that was, I don't care if you don't be, believe in God, but you're an atheist. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that about. Yeah. Uh, and, and even not believing in God is some, something people think you need morality. Sorry, you need God in order to be to be moral. I mean, a ridiculous idea like that. Uh, and um, consciousness raising, standing up and, say, and saying, I'm I'm a okay. decent fellow. And, All right. And so that's an interesting <laughs> distinction that I'm happy to embrace. All right. There is the religious community where. They can be responsible for heinous acts of violence, or warfare, or prejudice. Okay. Then there are people who are just religious because they're religious. And they're okay with anybody else with whatever else yeah. they are. All right? I'd like to think that's the majority. I don't know if it is. Then there are people who are religious. Their religion is right, every other religion is wrong, and you're worse than even the wrong religions because you're atheist. They're the ones who don't really understand where morality comes from, yeah, or, yeah. or, and so these people need to be educated, no doubt about it. Yeah. And if they're educated by example, where they learn that their best friend comes out as secular, that's interesting. That's how we learn that was made what went far in getting society to understand and recognize and accept the gay population. And in fact, you've seen the statistics. Uh, the percentage of the, you've seen the statistics. If you look in the age spread of who is, who endorses gay marriage and who doesn't, 
So the younger is the demographic, the more open they are to, yeah. to this. Because they all have friends who, who yeah. totally are yeah. open yeah. about it. And the people 60 and over, none of their friends ever admitted to them yeah. that they were gay. Because you know they're there. Yeah. We got the numbers, they're real. Yeah. And they show up in every generation. So uh, maybe it's just slower than you want it, it to be. It, it, it's great to have friends doing that. And, and that's very important, of course. But any advertising person knows that, uh, that a role model, I mean, you're a role model, but mm -hmm. big time uh, um, in, in America. Uh, and for somebody like you, who has an enormous following, um, not just as a scientist, but as a, but, but as a obviously nice guy, if I may say, I mean, you know, the sort of person that everybody, everybody thank likes. You, thank you, thank you. Uh, like David Attenborough in Britain. Mm -hmm. Um, we just had him on Star Talk. He's the nicest guy ever. Absolutely, yes. Ever. Yes. Ever. Uh -huh. um, so when somebody like that uh, stands up and says, "I'm gay" or "I'm a non," "I'm a non-believer," that's worth millions of ordinary friends. Mm -hmm. And, and um, uh, so, I, I mean, I think it, it's um, it's something that, that that needs to be done. And the, these little little YouTube videos are, are, are great when they are when they're the. the you know, the man next door, or something, the woman next door. Mm -hmm. But um, the sort of person who could who could sell soap flakes. I mean, um, you can do much better than selling soap flakes. You can you can sell anti bigotry. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm out there. I mean, I'm out there. <laughs> I guess it's just I, it's not a big issue to me. No, that's what it is. And I'd rather get people to think, discover the beauty and grandeur and splendor of the universe and whatever comes out of that. If you, for having studied Darwin, became an atheist, why tell them to be an atheist? Just tell them to study Darwin. No, no, I agree with that, but, yeah. I, but, 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 I, but I, we shifted from that to, say, to saying, don't, don't be prejudiced, don't be, don't be yeah. bigoted. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, I, I'm all for not being prejudiced. <laughs> Obviously, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Big fan of not being prejudiced. <laughs> Uh, about anything, but uh, I that thirty percent number that was a smaller number before. It's growing. The th sorry, the thirty percent uh, who are. Uh, I, I think that thirty percent may be of the younger demographic. I think it might be so, twenty percent. So it's even so it's even higher. Oh, oh, oh I, no, I see. No, I think, I it's think skewed it's, by the younger generation. But even I mean, twenty percent is a high percentage. But it, it, that, it, could, that can shift elections completely. Yes, but and and. In, in a way that the Jewish vote can shift, shift elections, mm -hmm. but whereas the, the numbers are, are much smaller. Much smaller. Yeah. They're way smaller. Yeah. The fraction of the American population who is Jewish yes. compared with the fraction of the American population who is... Uh, non-believer. Non non-believer yes. is the... And yet the non-believers are manifestly failing at shifting elections. I mean, we can't even get a single member of Congress. Right, right. Well, I, I still would rather just have no label at all. The only ist I am, as I said, is a scientist. Yes. And beyond that, have a conversation with me, as we just did. <laughs> yes, well, good. I mean, uh, yeah, too. <laughs> uh, and last thing, just to get the current events value of this, um, the Pope came out. Uh, pope Francis came out yes. uh, it's, uh, just a little while. The Pope came out just a few news cycles ago, uh, saying what I thought were quite um, forward-thinking things about the role of science and discovery and the role of Catholicism relative to it. I think a lot of that had already existed in some way in Catholic doctrine, um, but the, the press made a very big deal of this. And yes. Did you have a reaction at the time? Well, I, I think they made a bigger deal than necessary. I mean, Pope, Pope John Paul II said exactly the same thing, yeah. and Benedict was not quite so vocal about it, but, it, but, but he didn't... didn't uh, so they're there. In some yeah. in some way, um, they 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 have no problem with evolution, and and mm -hmm. it, that took uh, past the twelfth actually didn't didn't either, um, but because what we did, I was on a panel for the national sorry, for, I was on a panel for the National Academy of Sciences to create a document, a committee to create a document titled Evolution versus Creationism, and it was a document for educators, resources. Here's how you teach it. Here's how you can show where one, where creationism, religious creationism fails, and how biological evolution succeeds. We made great efforts to create a, an appendix in the back that listed every single religious organization that was just fine with evolution. And there's like a council of bishops, or there's some yeah. organizations out there. So I, I want to pose a question back to you. That 
exercise of making this document is not telling people to not be religious. It's saying, here's evolution and it is objectively true, fold it into your religion or not, but this is all we're trying to tell you to do. Whereas other things you've done professionally, God Delusion and others, are, tr are arguing against religion entirely. Whereas our document just said, here are religious organizations, they're with us on this. Yeah. Uh, that's a very important thing to do because an enormous number of people actually... They're influential. Think, yeah, and, and yes, but lo lots of people think that, it, 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 that in order to believe in evolution you've got to give up your, your religion. And their pastors, their priests, bear responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. because, because, and so it, it is a very important message to get out there. Uh, I want, sometimes, I feel a little bit unsatisfied by that. Um, I think that there is a, something deeply unscientific about religion, mm -hmm. and it, it, there's deeply un, something deeply unscientific about Van Gogh's Starry Night. Yeah, no, that, that, but I don't. That's yes, that's different. That, that doesn't. That doesn't well, that's mean, why that sentence doesn't come out no, of my it, mouth. Uh, the, the the thing that's deeply unscientific about religion is that it's no. All right, let's not say unscientific. It is a scientific theory that there is a designer of the universe. It's not something outside science. It affects your scientific view of the, of the universe, mm -hmm. if, you th if you think that there is. And having said that, it is important to disabuse people of the, of the illusion that you've got to give up your religion if, you're, if, you're, um, if you take up evolution. That, however, has a paradoxical upside for me. If people have been told by their uh, pastors that if you accept evolution, you've got to give up your religion, we can definitely prove evolution is true. I want them to give up their religion. And so if I can, if I can use evolution to get in there as, as a wedge and say, all your life you've been told that the moment you accept evolution, your religion is down the drain. I want that to happen. <laughs> um, and so, you say that almost diabolically. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yes, uh, I want that. But, but, but I'm, I know I'm in a minority there. Yeah. Sure. And, and I know and because that's, that's very that's an extreme it, social posture to take. It, it sounds yeah. it, but I, I think it's highly reasonable. Well, it happened to you. Yes. You you converted, if we can call it yes. that, after you learned yes. Darwin. So you, you see the paradox I'm, I'm raising. That, yes, I do. That, that if 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 people like you and Eugenie Scott uh, manage to convince people that there's absolutely no incompatibility between, then I've lost my secret weapon, so to speak. Okay, I, I didn't say there was no, that, okay, let me just clarify okay. anything that I would have ever said. I never said religion and science are compatible. And that's a very common question that I'm sure you get, I get all the time. Are they compatible? All I ever say is, if your religion is making testable claims about the physical world, be ready for the, phys for the methods and tools of science to show that it's false. If you're not ready for that, then pick another religion or, you know, move to an island. But if you're going to make testable claims, we're going to be all up in those claims. And the history of that exercise yes. is one where science wins every, every time. Every single time. Every single time. Okay. And so what has happened over the years is the Bible, like the Jeffersonian Bible, where he cuts away yeah. all of the miracles and, and leaves the Sermon on the Mount and leaves the... The, the statements that actually have some strong redeeming cultural social value. And if that's how you construct your religion, I'm not going to get in your way of that. No. Um, I would like to, to broaden out the testability criteria a little bit, though, because uh -huh. um, uh, you, it, it may be that you can never, ever uh, do find a, a, a falsifiable claim. You can actually do an experiment to test. However, as a scientist, you also accept plausibility arguments. Oh, I do that all the time. I'm, I don't treat it pure logically. Right. There, there's, I, I, let me start that again. Um, I think the often repeated comment that you can't prove a negative. Yes. I, I think that is a very misleading yes. concept. In science, we show negatives all the time. Uh, I don't want to use the word proof because that's mathematical. Proof exists in math. Yeah. Here, so, for example, if you have a hypothesis that a bear exists in a certain zone, a certain geographic zone, and you know that the bear would have to be heavy, and if it rains, uh, a bear would leave footprints, and yeah. bears poop, yeah. large yeah. poop, all right? And there's, there's, 
there would be evidence of a bear even if you never found the bear. Yes. And if you do not see the poop, you do not see the footprints, even if you drop dust, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, white dust yeah, around. That, that, that ought to be evidence. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And there's no, and you put it in front of a cave, and, and you wait for a full cycle of seasons, and there are no footprints. Scientifically, you have demonstrated the absence of a bear. Yes. Conclu conclusively enough, so you can walk up and down there and send your kids out there yeah. and not worry about it. It's that not game. totally conclusive, but for all intents and purposes... Scientifically, we're good with that, and we move yeah. on to the next and I problem. I think that's a good parallel for, for, for God. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, perhaps the difference between us is, I don't care if they want to keep believing that. I just care that it, they stay out of the science classroom. Yeah. Because then it's not yeah. science. It's really not science. And there was no tradition of scientists knocking down the Sunday school's door trying to tell the, the theologians and the, and the preachers what to teach. There's no tradition. Atheists don't even do that. And so I cry foul when they want to come over. And part of it, I think, is they know that science has a certain cachet and they want to sort of oh, attach that, to, that, to this. That's what the Templeton Foundation is all it's, it's founded by Sir John, uh, Templeton. Sir John Templeton, the, the financier, who got fabulously wealthy. Mm -hmm. And he was, felt pretty sure that there was some connection between the physical universe and 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 and, and spirituality and God and religion and so he just wants to explore these intersections all right uh, I was asked to write to answer the question does the universe have a purpose and I was paid for that and that's online and I actually read it to to script so that there's there's like a YouTube video of what I wrote illustrated uh, but I did take money because I felt this was an occasion for me to tell that audience how a, a scientist yeah, and the, the more money you take, that. the less there is for them to get to. <laughs> <laughs> so, Richard, thanks for coming through town. Okay. This is a long overdue conversation. Yes. Because I think yes. every time I see you, I say, you know, I want to tell him this, and I want to mm -hmm. think about that and get his take on this. So, but it was great to have you here. And um, well, maybe we can do this again over, over dinner. So. Yeah. Over a bottle of wine. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and then more will come out in a different way, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. So, thanks again. Okay, All thank right. You. for us to think rationally, logically, scientifically. Yeah, I mean, you made the very interesting point that maybe we're not wired to be good at logic. Well, you generalized from mathematics to logic. Yeah, I did, but, but, um, but for this conversation, I yeah, think we can um, claim that. Certainly, many, many people are extremely illogical, but... Um, and they, by the way, they get along just fine in life. They live long, long lives, yeah. and... But I think it's an interesting point that our that our wild ancestors needing to survive in the in the presence of lions and drought and famine and things. You'd think logic would be pretty important for survival. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, I, if not mathematics, at least. Well, well, it could be maybe early people who said, "Oh, there's a creature there with big teeth. Let me investigate it further." <laughs> I mean, in a way, that's right. The, it's being some too level, scientific is, is a bad thing. Uh, curiosity yeah. doesn't always work. Um, my, uh, I had a cousin as a, who was a, a little boy, uh, put his finger in the, the, in the mains and got a shock. So he did it again just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real scientist, <laughs> but not very good for survival. Right, right. So perhaps the 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 gut reaction uh, to run or to be scared or to to chant or, uh, I mean, I guess what I'm getting at is there's so much of human civilization that derives not from logical thinking, but from what we might sim simply call illogical thinking. Illogical thinking and, I mean, art. You know, I've got Van Gogh on the wall. No one's going to quiz him and say, how logical were you when you painted The Starry Night? And so what does it mean to object then? To people who feel this way, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more, I detach myself more 
from that battle than you do. You are you are in the front lines, and I'm way in the back line watching you do this, and and I'm saying sometimes people just want to feel rather than think. Yes, this man writes his papers, he does his mathematics and everything. He privately believes the world is only 6,000 years old. Well, uh, you may be tolerant of that because you may say, well, as long as he gets his sums right, as long as he, his paper is well... The research written, paper, yeah. Mm -hmm. fine. I would say that man should be fired. Um, <laughs> he should not be a professor of astrophysics in, in an American university. And that we might differ about that because you might say, uh, his private beliefs are private, they're nothing to do with me. If he does his astronomy right, um, then that, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you that that's how I would react. Yeah. Yeah, what he does at home on Sunday, that's his only. But if, if, if it doesn't enter the science classroom, then I don't care how he thinks or okay, what he then believes. Okay, let me take an even more extreme example, okay. which is fictitious in this, in this case. Uh -huh. uh, in, imagine that you were going to consult a doctor uh, and I, I'm, I make him an eye doctor, because they're sort of, you know, about the waist. But you happen to know that he privately doesn't believe in the sex theory of reproduction. He believes that babies come from storks. Okay. Um, no, guessing, I wouldn't go to that doctor. I'm guessing you would not go to that doctor. Yeah, but, but I've met plenty of people, especially in, in America, who say, it's none of your business what he believes below the waist. Um, uh -huh. uh, he's an eye doctor. Is he a competent? Can he, can he repair your cataracts? Uh, um, and, and I, I don't think he should be employed in a hospital um, because, because what you're saying about that man is that he, he's got the kind of mind which is so adrift from reality that even if he's a competent eye surgeon, um, I don't think he, should, he could be trusted. Okay, so you're, you, you, interestingly, you are reacting in the way our ancestors hearing the rustle in the bushes are yeah, reacting because way, yes. you, yeah. most of the time it's yeah. wind yes some of the time it's a leopard and yes. that's a fear factor that creates a fear factor that overrides everything else he's a good eye surgeon he or she is a good eye surgeon right but there's that lingering risk that the stork theory of reproduction might somehow affect the scalpel I don't so you're, you need, fear I'm that not risk. sure it needs to, to affect the scalpel. I, th I think it's something... Okay, so then, then you object on principle. I think so, yeah. Yeah, not yes. on practice. It's, yes. it's a principle well, thing. Or the professor of geography who believes in the flat earth, but... But, but, but otherwise makes perfect but globes. Make, yes, 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 quite. <laughs> yes, exactly. There are okay, so, you're, so you're, you're a principled person. That's all that means. You, have a, you think it should be a certain way, and everything surrounding it, even if in practice it doesn't manifest, you, you kind of want the whole package to, so, to be yeah. consistent. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so now given that, what do you do about it? Because um, I don't really do anything. You, you want to change that. And we just admitted together that we are prisoners of this of, of mystical, magical ways of thinking, and, or illogical ways of thinking. And now you want to, so you want to change the biological directive of the human mind. And I, how do you do that? I, I like to use the phrase consciousness raising, okay. which, is, which is a feminist phrase. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, it started in the I, feminist I think, movement? I think that, that's where I first okay. heard it anyway. Mm -hmm. And consciousness raising um, is, so we're, we're not, I don't want to be dictatorial and say there should be a law against illogical thinking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not that fascist. But, um, you know what happened if you do pass law? If, let's imagine a future where all illogical people had to move to one particular state. That would be okay. wonderful, yes. <laughs> no, 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 but that, that would be the state where like, all the music and art would come from, right? All the, the, the truly creative I people are some of the least logical people I've ever met, yet they create and they, they, they make the world a little more interesting. But that, that's my but thing. If that were true, I would, I'd go along with the audience. <laughs> <from that. laughs> <laughs> that's a different issue, whether or not that's, that's a true fact. Issue, yeah. Okay, whether... All right, so, so what do you do? Do you, do you want to consciousness raise? Do you, you have tactics? Because I want to consciousness raise, too. So I've got... Ta I want, let's compare. Okay, I uh, suspect your tactics may be better than mine. <laughs> um, because your, 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 your tactics, I think, are to lead by example. Yes. Um, to, um, to, 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 to pr practice logic, practice science, Expose the wonder of science. I like to do all that as well. In fact, your book has the word once. I'm, I keep pushing back to the evolutionary origins of this, and, and when you have to survive in a, in a hostile environment, it may be that 
you do need a certain amount of illogical uh, gut. Yes, it may be that you need to fear things which logic tells you. But maybe it's a matter of the of the odds that that, that something is actually dangerous. Um, or the cost to you, the, if it the is. The cost to you. If 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 you see if you see a sort of rustling in the trees, um, it it could be a, a leopard about to jump on you. But it's much more likely to be the wind, and and the the, the logical rational explanation is probably it's the wind. But when your survival depends upon the, the remote possibility, one well, not remote, the, the rather lower pr probability that it might be a leopard, the prudent thing is to be uh, more risk averse than than a, than a than the statistics justify. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So now we have a world where we're kind of we're prisoners of this sort of genetic molding that has occurred, and now. So, so I guess my, my point is I don't object, object as much to that as you do. Yes, okay. And, and it, it, like it, it, what's the phrase? It tickles your claw or craw, gets yeah, in your know, craw, whatever what that mean. phrase is. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so well, get on this let, let, let me, let this me campaign. Try, let me try to get in your craw, whatever this question is. <laughs> um, Go on, bring it, uh, bring, bring uh, it on. <laughs> the the, the a, a former professor of astronomy at Oxford told me a story of an American astrophysicist who... Now, I am one of these folks, so I, I would know these names if you mentioned them, I, I, unless I, they're yeah, suppressed. I, 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 yeah, for, for... I, he, he didn't tell me the name. Okay. 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 Um, and this man writes learned articles in astronomical learned journals, mathematical papers, and the mathematics is premised on the belief that the world is, uh, that, 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 that the universe is between 13 and 14 billion years old. Mm -hmm. And So I've got here, live in the flesh, the one, the only, the inimitable, Richard Dawkins. Richard, thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Thanks for me. coming to what we think of here as the center of the universe. I understand <laughs> that. <yeah>. No, <laughs> you've come to agree then. <laughs> Uh, this, I think this is the first time Richard's visited me in my office, and so thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, just talk about the, the human mind's capacity to know, and to think, and to believe. You know, I look at how much trouble people have with mathematics, typically. If there's any one subject that the most number of people say I was never good at, insert a topic, it's going to be math. And so I say to myself, if our brain were wired for logical thinking, then math would be everyone's easiest subject, and everything else would be harder. So I, I'm kind of forced to conclude that our brain is not wired for logic. That's a very good point, and it's more than just that. I think there's also a kind of unwarranted pride in being bad at mathematics. Uh -huh. uh, you will never hear anybody saying how proud they are of being ignorant of Shakespeare right. uh, or Dryden. Um, but people, plenty of people will say they're, they're proud of being ignorant of, of uh, mathematics. Or if they don't use the word proud, they'll say, I was never good at math, ha 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 ha, yeah, they'll chuckle that, about it, that, it becomes right. a joke. Um, there was a thing in, in one of the British newspapers where a, there was a science writer, I think a science journalist, was lamenting the fact that many people in Britain uh, think it takes one month for the Earth to orbit the Sun. And the editor then inserted there, doesn't it, Ed? <laughs> Uh, so he was, as it were, say, saying, you know, I'm the editor of a national newspaper. And of course, I don't really think it takes, but nevertheless, I, it's okay to make a joke about being ignorant of this very elementary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. point of astronomy, which he would never, ever do about being, you know, con confusing, confusing Byron with Virgil or, or, or something like that. Right, and, and, or ever be proud of such a thing. So, so then you must admit or confess that we as a human